Hey guys, Dr. Deuce back again with another great set of music tech tips for you. Now today we're going to be looking at something that's quite useful when you're recording audio, whether it be vocals or live instruments. Um, and this tutorial is going to be not just useful to sort of guys who are new to um, working in digital audio workstations such as Logic Pro X, but also for guys who have been working for some time in the analog domain and um, now sort of switching over to digital. Um, the way things are monitored, especially recording levels, is quite different. And through this tutorial, I'll demonstrate real quick how you can get the right levels when you're recording audio. Let's get started. Okay, so this is a track that I've been working on for a couple of days and I'm going to lay down some electric bass on here. Bass is all rigged up and ready to go. So I'll, let me just play you back a little bit to give you an idea of where we're going. Okay, so that's the track so far. I'm ready to record my bass, but it's important that I get the level set up correctly. Now there are a number of different gain stages that my signal will pass through before getting into the computer. The first gain stage is the volume of my bass guitar, the actual volume knob on my bass. Secondly, as the signal leaves the bass and it goes into my amplifier, of course the amplifier will also have a level set in and that will be the gain knob on the actual amp. Now, of course, I've mic'd up my amp. Now the signal will pass from the amp through the microphone and down to my audio interface. That also has another gain setting. So all of these need to be set correctly before I begin capturing my bass line. Okay, so I've set up all of my gain stages up to this point and I'm happy with the overall signal level. Now, I've gone and created uh, an audio track in Logic Pro and I've switched on the input monitoring switch. Over here, um, I'm resetting my channel fader by holding down the Alt key. And also I'll click here to make sure that the clip level is reset. Okay, now this bit's important. What we're aiming for is a maximum input level or peak of minus 18 dB, okay? Now this is different to when you're working in the analog domain because when you're working in analog, you can get fairly close to sort of to zero dB. But when you're working in this sort of digital domain, you want to aim for minus 18 dB, which is sort of an optimum level when you're recording analog into your DAW, all right? So to do this, what I'm gonna do is just play back my baseline and just kind of see what's coming in and adjust my input level so that I'm hitting around minus 18. Okay, so after a few test runs, um, I've managed to get my uh, input level to just about minus 18 dB. Um, it crept over slightly to minus 17, but that's okay. I can work with that. All right, so it's time now for me to lay the baseline down and um, let's do this. I'm gonna switch from input monitoring to record ready and let's go.
Okay, so I've recorded the baseline and I'm happy with the outcome. Um, as you would have seen, the input level kind of crept slightly over my minus 18 dB guide point. However, it was only a couple of dBs and it's enough. Um, there was enough headroom there to work with. Um, however, the, the main principle is that you want to aim for minus 18 dB, um, dBFS, in fact, full scale. Now, um, this principle applies to not only instruments such as bass, guitars and electrics, but also to vocals and other live instruments that are coming in either via a microphone or a jack cable or an XLR cable being connected to your audio interface. I, I do hope this has made sense and it, it will definitely help in terms of the quality of your recordings. Um, as usual, do remember to comment, like and subscribe to the channel. I'll be back real soon with more. This is Dr. Deuce. Peace.